Hi everybody. It is still November 15, 2017. I said in the video that I posted earlier that I was going to be posting a video on what is taking place in Houston and I can't. I am going to just do a video responding to some comments and sharing my experience of what is going on with these frequencies that are different. And this video is really for those who are sensitive to the frequencies. How are you doing now? I just got a comment from someone who wrote, um, I have a G tower next to my house, a mile away with a lot of gadgets on it. I have a lot of health issues such as fibromyalgia, fatigue, Occupin? I don't know what that is. Sleep deprivation, heart palpitations, immune system down, hair loss, etc. So many health issues. I'm so fed up. I unplug my Wi-Fi every night, shut my cell phone most of the time, keep it away from my head or body. My next phone will be a landline and no more cell phone for me. Um, I would get rid of your Wi-Fi completely and, and get an Ethernet cable to ground your internet access. You know, I did a video on Kafka Winston World. It was a fundraiser for my neighbor to pay her internet bill, elderly, social security, So many people are struggling. Well, I thought, and I assumed, and I don't know why I assumed this, that she didn't have Wi-Fi. I thought she had it grounded. Did I assume that because she's elderly? Did I assume that with the neighbor on the other side of me? Now, I live in a very tiny apartment. See that wall behind me? That's where my neighbor has Wi-Fi. I can't get away from it. The Wi-Fi router, I move my bed so it's not right at my head, but it doesn't matter because I'm literally sitting in Wi-Fi. I have to ask my neighbor on the other side if she's got Wi-Fi because for the past, I'd say about four weeks, what has happened to me I can't explain any other way but for these frequencies. Now, I've been going to the satellite sites and I have noticed massive geoengineering off the east coast of the United States, the entire east coast. And in that artificial cloud substance, I see the massive use of frequencies. But the massive geoengineering that's taking place off the East Coast, I didn't see that years ago when I was going on satellites virtually every single day. I saw it on the off the West Coast in the Pacific, which it's still going on there, but now it's really happening off the East Coast. And I have videos of the frequencies that make themselves very visible in the sky here. But for the past four weeks, I have noticed that the frequency, the buzzing that I hear, it absolutely has a higher pitch to it. It's loud now during the day. Um, right now, I'd say about <clears throat> four weeks ago, ever since I've been sensitive to these frequencies, if I had a conversation with somebody, if I was making a video, if I was doing research, if I was engaged in something, then I didn't hear it. You know, I wasn't paying attention to it. Now, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It is so 
right there all the time. High pitched tones periodically in one ear or the other that come with a sharp, like piercing, like needle. It hurts. I, the, my sleep is gone. Um, and just that in itself, all of you who are suffering from insomnia or not being able to sleep very well, or you're sleeping but you wake up exhausted, that is absolutely a symptom of microwave electromagnetic frequencies that we are all saturated in now. I posted videos on how other countries have standards. They set these frequencies at levels that are not affecting their populations. The United States is the worst. Our standards, our levels, are off the charts. So, more and more people are becoming symptomatic. The friend that I have here lives a few miles away from me. She's got Wi-Fi. That's the friend who has a husband who has this gadget that is part of his work. They can't turn off the Wi-Fi. She called me Saturday. Well, she called me a few weeks ago to tell me. Now she hears chirping. That never goes away. That's how she describes it. And that's how um, many describe it in the articles. Chirping, clicking, buzzing, humming. I describe mine as buzzing. So she describes hers as chirping. And she called on Saturday and said that it was driving her nuts and asked her husband to turn the Wi-Fi off because Saturday afternoon till Sunday evening is the only time that he does not have to um, pay attention to work stuff. But she is dealing with Lyme disease and an awful lot of symptoms that I believe are related to the Wi-Fi smart meter that she has on her home. It's, it is absolutely horrible that we are forced to live like this because it really does a number on, well, I'll speak for myself, emotionally, mentally, psychically, spiritually, to struggle every single day, to not be able to do the things that you know that you're capable of doing. Your functioning is, my functioning has really, it's gotten to the point where those things that we would do naturally, that we wouldn't even have to think of, everything I have to do, I have to pay attention. My balance is off. My coordination. But the brain fog. Now, I have dealt with that in particular since I've become sensitive to the frequencies, but it's gotten to a level that is really now concerning I live a circumstance that every single day for years I have been struggling with how the hell am I going to do this and I have not been able to think. And now I'm really struggling with memory. I was on the phone with Geico, my insurance, and I couldn't remember my telephone number, the first three letters. I have numbers. And I literally couldn't remember. And I got anxious because I thought, oh my God, he's going to think I'm stealing my identity. But that kind of stuff is happening more frequently. I'm asking you guys, how are you? Because this is getting really tough. And about, well, it was after Harvey and after I had spoken to my friend a number of times and listening to the nightmare that she has fallen into, my friend in Houston. And I, I, I got a little bit of energy back. I got a little bit of me back. I got a little bit of that confidence back that 
I lost a long time ago. And I'm walking around the track and I'm thinking, okay, I've got to do this. I felt so motivated. I was so determined to do the things that I was saying in a video on Kafka Winston World. How I wanted to create a website where people could just go and donate knowing that their donations were actually going to help people. I was thinking of ways in which, you know, that I could make it very transparent so everybody would know who they were helping, wanted to do more videos, all of the videos that go through my mind and all of what I have bookmarked and make them a little bit better, came home, sat down at that computer, and I was hit with an exhaustion that was so crippling. And suddenly my confidence was gone. And suddenly I am feeling like, what the hell is going on? I can't concentrate. I can't focus. All of what I had in me walking around that track, I came back and it's gone. And I'm back to that place of struggle. And I've been there 24 seven, consciously trying everything to get that back. And I've not been able to. Now I don't experience anxiety. I'm not an anxious person. I live a circumstance that one would really be quite anxious. And I have been experiencing a low level anxiety for weeks that has not gone away. Periodically, for a couple of hours, I might feel okay, but it comes back. And it's the kind of anxiety that is, it pushes me kind of back, like I'm afraid to, you know, step out. I'm afraid to do a video. That's not me. So, in some of the comments that I have screen captured, and the video that I said that I was going to be making on what's happening in Houston, I, my computer, everything's going, my car, my computer, um, other things that I now can't even remember. Um, but my computer, I can't say that it's this video editing program that I downloaded because I've been having these problems before, but since I downloaded this program, because my video editing program, the power, is it power director? Jesus. Uh, very old and crashing my computer a lot power director. Um, so I wanted to get something where I could post the kind of videos that I want to. And wow, ever since that, it has kind of created more problems. So I, I the not responding that I get on my browsers is driving me nuts. So I'm going to try to do that video tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm a YouTuber who can't seem to uh, do the things that I want to do. But I want to read some comments. Thank you for reposting this. It was the DARPA video, the frequencies, the use of mind control. Uh, thank you for reposting this. Many are still very unaware. People listen up. Capital letters. This is real. Capital letters. I attest to it personally. Symptoms intensify over time. Generalized to regular household electric and one only gets better by reducing or eliminating EMF exposure. Now, I want to say to those who have left responses to people commenting 
and comments to what I have said, move. Move. As if people actually have the means to move. Now, I'm stuck. There's an awful lot of my subscribers who are stuck in the environment. They don't have the means to move. So for those who leave those kinds of comments, um, well, you must be wealthy. You must be very comfortable. This is very hard to combat. So, and everything that I've been doing, exercising regularly, detoxing, I should not be feeling this way. For the woman who talked about the fibromyalgia, yeah, I was diagnosed. Fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. And lately, every single day, I feel like I have that fibromyalgia flare-up. Which, you know, leaves me feeling various symptoms that come and go and you never know when they're coming or going. The exhaustion is um, I'm not somebody who sits back and does nothing. I don't have Wi-Fi. I have almost no electronics. That Wi-Fi, and probably the Wi-Fi in the other apartment, has dried out my eyes to the point where they hurt constantly, waking up every single morning with these horrible headaches. You can't function for hours. You feel drugged. Um, but the comment goes on. Uh, one only gets better by reducing or eliminating EMF exposure. This will take three months or more. At a certain point along the progression of the course of sensitivity inju injury, a sensitive person will be able to immediately identify cause and effect. <laughs> However, when the body becomes too saturated, inundated, symptoms will linger well beyond exposure making the cause difficult to identify, as is the case with so many. This is not a progressive neurological disease. It is listed as such in some EU countries. This is a human system's response to overexposure to man-made EMF. It is overexposure. But how many live in apartment complexes with smart meters all over the place, with cell phone towers, all over the place with neighbors having Wi-Fi. Um, reduce exposure, you will get better, though it will take time. Yes, it causes brain cancer, and yes, the incidence of brain cancer in adults and children was up 40% when I last read the statistics, which was at least eight years ago. Symptoms, restless buzzing, droning, high-pitched sounds in ears originating in the head often of multiple frequencies. This alone has been the cause of suicide for many and often precludes the other more serious symptoms, anxiety, a lack of usual sense of self-confidence. This sounds weird, but you will recognize this if it happens to you. Clicking, clanging sounds in the head, tingling, heat, body heat, the sudden onset of feeling like your temperature just rose, um, or bug crawling sensation on skin head pain, heat, pressure, chronic dullness, heart irregularity, bone pain, 
which is usually reduced by distance from the electrical appliance causing it, visual disturbances, my vision is deteriorating, seeing weird digital like patterns overlaid on what is being seen, this is really weird to experience, when physiological responses are great enough they can lead to drop attacks which I believe is passing out. It is real folks and people are medicating their kids for anxiety every day rather than understanding EMF exposure causes symptoms of, of anxiety. And I will tell you, my neighbor a couple of days ago called me. She got very dizzy suddenly. She wanted me to take her pulse. I'm not good at that kind of stuff. And she had one of those um, pulse readers. She just needed a new battery. We got a new battery. She had high blood pressure. I think it was 177. I went to my doctor a couple of, um, well, more like a week ago. Every time I go there, I dread going there. His office is so Wi-Fi. He's across the street from the hospital with all of their antennas on the roof. Caddy Corner is the emergency services building with their major antenna. In that intersection of Anderson, South Carolina, I have had several vertigo episodes having to pull off the side of the road because I couldn't drive twice I obviously got hit with a microwave frequency because the pain the sudden onset of excruciating pain in my abdomen that only lasted for a few minutes and then it was gone like it was never there right smack in that intersection so my doctor is there and I sit in the waiting room for a long period of time with all of these patients with their smartphones right smack in their face and all of the gadgets you know the this screen that's mounted on the wall with all of these I don't know it's some kind of programming medical programming and then you go into his office or into you know one of the rooms and he comes in and iPod. So I go there because I had blood tests. I go for the results. And I had more blood tests taken because my blood test results from the last time showed that I was very low with B12. So I've been taking B12 and wanted to see if there was any change. And he's reading my blood test results. A plus, A plus. Oh yeah, my stats are great everything's great. He puts his iPod down and I said, well, what about B12? That was the point of the blood test. And picks up his iPod. Oh, I forgot to order it. I walked out and he had not ordered it. He forgot again and I forgot again. His 20 four-year-old nursing assistant who I really love. She's a sweetheart. I asked her how she was doing and she said that she was feeling a little bit better today but yesterday, the day before, she went over to the emergency room, 24 years old. She said she suddenly felt like an elephant was sitting on her chest her blood pressure, 24 years old, was 192. Why? I asked. They don't know the cause. She thinks that she has, or they think that she's got an arrhythmia problem. I can't even remember. Wi-Fi frequencies. I listen to people talking when, and I talk to strangers. 
I watch people, I observe people, and they walk as if they don't feel well. You know, it, it's very sad to see the destruction of the American people. I've had so many experiences with people that you would never ever expect adults to say the things that they do. But they do. So this is very serious guys and yeah I agree with that um, person who wrote that comment. You've got to reduce your exposure if you can. If you can there's no excuse. No excuse. If you have Wi-Fi in your home and you know what these frequencies can do, when I have posted so many videos saying subscribers who were not symptomatic years ago are now struggling every single day. Their functioning has decreased they having to live this nightmare. So, while it's very, very hard to deal with when you can't reduce because it has to do with other people, it has to do with cell phone towers and smart meters and Wi-Fi all over the friggin' place, and you're just stuck with that, if you can, then there are no excuses why you're doing this to yourself. You know, it amazes me when I talk to people who can get rid of Wi-Fi and I find out that they just don't. So, you know, is, is our population suicidal? Have they taken away the survival instinct from Americans? I was having a conversation with a subscriber friend and she was talking about her experiences with family members, friends who are getting sick. They not doing anything that she has suggested. They not doing the research. They just smile and look at her as if she's crazy. Vaccines this technology. These are adults that she's talking to. So I said, I, I do, you know, think that they've kind of taken away the survival instinct. When you talk to an adult and you say you need to do research on these vaccines, you need to do research on these frequencies, you need to do the research on the Wi-Fi because it might be causing your medical problems. When you have MS and you're complaining how it's getting worse, and I had this experience, an adult sitting in a wheelchair, MS, getting worse, and she sits in Wi-Fi all day long. And I said, do the research. Because the Wi-Fi may be contributing to your decline. Did she? No. So what's going on here? Adults who simply don't care about their own health. Adults who will listen to other adults who have done the research and they simply just think they're crazy and they won't do any research. Is it because they just simply don't want to do a thing to change? I don't know. I don't know what it is. But it seems like an awful lot of Americans are hell-bent on destroying their own health. Some even consciously. Here, the last several days, it has been so dark over here on the coast in Belgium. Belgium. Like it's dusk time on a rainy day. No clouds, no blue, just a dark, white-out gray sky. The frequencies are at times hardly bearable and constant. The Morgellons are painful, 
and just not healing. Feels like I have cotton balls in my brain all the time. I do 3D design and pixel art and more, so my brain is normally very sharp, but not anymore. I feel myself slipping away. And I don't want to mention anybody's names, but that's exactly how I feel. And yes, while reducing one's exposure is the best thing that one can do, exercising helps. Nothing seems to be kind of permanent. So yeah, you do struggle every single day and you do your best to try to feel better. And <clears throat> there's an awful lot of people who um, believe in Organite and um, some have suggested, you know, the clothing that has a specific material that shields their frequencies. I say try everything, do the research, and, and if you have the money, go ahead and try everything. And if it works for you, great. Don't then judge other people when it doesn't work for them because everybody's constitution, everybody is different, all right? So uh, one could be incredibly saturated in these frequencies. And another person who finds relief with, let's say, Organite, the person who's so saturated may not find relief. So, you know, it's a really, now it's a very individual thing. And, but it is good to hear from other people. It helps me. Not that misery loves company, but these invisible weapons, you know, when everybody is claiming that we are crazy or hypochondriacs, right? Hypochondriacs. You're not. You're not. And there is strength that I get from people who share their personal experience. So that's one of the reasons why I do these videos. But it really has gotten to the point where, like that, like so many of you, feeling like it's getting really hard, who use words like unbearable, slipping away. Well, they have agendas to get us right there. These agendas are very successful. It's interesting, even within the awake crowd, those who are not symptomatic, I've gotten judged by them. They know the agenda, they have all the information, but because they're not experiencing it, they then turn around and judge us. And there's more of us subscribers that I've had who were completely fine years ago are now really not. I have ringing in my ears. Uh, a response to that comment, me too, got much worse over the last few months. Yes, it absolutely has. It seems to have gotten much worse recently for me too. These are, it's a thread another person same here another person yep and the ringing in your ears will continue to get worse mark my words cut back now immediately so that you don't get worse yes the effects are cumulative cumulative if you could get away from all of it it would take time depending on how you, the uh, duration that you were exposed and the level of exposure you can begin to recover but where can we go you know that one little town in what West Virginia or something 
can't remember the name of it. I checked it out. You gotta have money. If you don't have money, honey, then you just struggle and die. Remember my dog died of spontaneous eye bleed. Yeah. My son is 45. He was at the house three days ago and he had a spontaneous ear bleed. Bright red blood for seemingly no reason. He ignored it at first. No pain, no obvious reason. Well, last night he woke with severe ear and head pain and went to the emergency room. They can see no obvious cause and suspect a vessel broke. They, of course, tossed him eardrops. I haven't said anything to him to freak him out, but I am freaked out. What in the world is going on and what are we to do? And tornadoes here yesterday, November 5, touched down and there were some houses ripped apart. It was coming right towards me, but then did a loop and literally went right around my house. Strange magnetics here, and the sound carries strangely too. Jay County, Indiana. Yeah, Indiana had a lot of tornadoes. So did South Carolina and North Carolina. Damage to homes, to businesses. I don't think you heard that on mainstream media. That's, that's the local news reports. There's so much going on in this country that we just don't know about. Oh, and he writes, so it's hard to say what is going on in North Africa and Saudi Arabia, which is, that was a comment from the video that I did showing the world view, all of the geoengineering that's going on. Yes, this planet is being terraformed. It is being, all natural processes are being altered artificially now. So, you know, when we when we don't know what is going on in our neighbor states or hell, even I spoke to South Carolinians and mentioned the tornadoes in Spartanburg just about 10 days ago and they didn't even know about it. Um, and I'm new to this, how can you tell? I live in Maine and would love to find out if geoengineering might have something to do with a freakish windstorm that knocked out power to close to half a million Maine homes on October 30th. Yeah, geoengineering certainly had a lot to do with it. That is almost half the state's 1.3 million population. I had no electricity for nearly six days. Can someone tell me what I should be looking for among the cloud movements? Thanks in advance to anyone who may know. I would have pointed you to a lot of videos on my channel. Um, but you can just look outside. Maine, New England, I know you guys don't have much sun, especially during the winter. So you got all that artificial cloud substance in your sky that blocks the sun, and you can see the ripples in the sky. I was up in Maine last winter, and those ripples, that's the signature of all of the frequencies. Or if you see clouds, that have very defined lines, square clouds, rectangles. That's the frequencies. But, sorry to say, we don't have natural weather anymore. It has been taken over by man. And unfortunately, how they take it over is by spraying dangerous toxins into the air that we breathe, nanoparticulates, aluminum. How, how many aluminum particulates 
have crossed our blood-brain barrier already. Why do we have dementia? Exponentially increasing. But they use the frequencies also to uh, modify, manipulate, create, or intensify the snow in Maine last year was so unbelievable. It was like snowstorm upon snowstorm upon snowstorm. And I'm not talking flurries. I'm talking feet. Getting up on top of um, my friend's house to get the snow off. I think we did that twice. Shoveling and shoveling and shoveling. Even just that, even when you're not losing electricity, when you have so many people who are suffering from whatever it is that they're suffering from, when you have a sick population, and then you just have these snowstorms that just back to back to back, the physical, I thought, I literally really struggled with it. And you're talking to somebody from the north. You're talking to somebody who used to love to go out and shovel snow. I love the exercise of it. And suddenly I'm out there and I'm thinking, oh my God. And I was so sore after each one. I mean, it's so, yeah, it's very real. This is happening. More and more people are struggling. And I'm so sorry. And I wish that there was something that I could do. I wish that I could, you know, say, hey, this is a magic miracle cure for these frequencies. I don't have that. I don't have that cure. For those of you who are stuck, I know exactly how you feel. And I want to say to everybody that I hope that you do leave a comment. Tell me how you're doing. Feel free to say whatever is on your mind. I don't read your comments with any kind of judgment. And I have responded back to those who love to just judge other people that they don't know at all. I have your back on that. And yeah, I'm going to come back to my friend in Houston, and I am going to put my PayPal address down, and I am going to ask that you donate, because I am tired of people struggling, and she needs your help. So please, she is very sensitive to the frequencies. That's what we used to talk about when she was in her home before Harvey. That's what brought the two of us to Skyping and talking. The frequencies. So the stress has really... She's got a lot of medical conditions. The stress has really made that worse. She's in pain every single day. Her husband never was before sensitive to the frequencies. He got sensitive when he was living in the hotel. Hotels, heavily Wi-Fi. Suddenly he started hearing buzzing. That turned him around. But both of them, he's not as sensitive to 
to my friend, or his wife, but yeah, when you're now having to deal with disaster and you're having to deal with these frequencies, it makes everything far worse, more of a challenge to keep going. And people need help. So, I thank you for listening to me. I thank you for all of your comments. I am so sorry that you're having to, to deal with this. But it is very real. Depopulation, that agenda is very real. That's why our population is so sick. And that is why people are now dying. Very real. Please, all of you who don't believe this, who still are in your homes with all of your gadgets, with your Wi-Fi, just reduce your exposure. Get a landline. Or just use your phones for the cell phones for emergencies. I don't understand how it is that we do have so many people who even have, who know this, who know how dangerous the frequencies are, and they don't do a thing to reduce their exposure. Well, I am going to say this again. Subscribers in the beginning, when I got on YouTube, they, some actually would say to me, well, you know, I get what you're talking about, about the geoengineering and the weather modification. But these, the frequencies and cell phones and everything, yeah, they thought that I was going overboard. Guess what? Some actually, years later, apologized and said you were right. The frequencies, they became asymptomatic. They tripped over the line. and many are not happy about it. So you want to avoid that, right? So reduce your exposure. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Leave me comments. Let me know how you're doing. I hope, I hope, I hope you're all doing really well. My hunch, mm, we'll wait and see.